Let's take a, another example of constraint motion. Here we have a double pulley system. One pulley is over here, which is rigidly fixed to the ceiling, so the pulley can't move up and down, can only rotate. And you have a second pulley, which is free to move. It can move up and down, it's not rigidly fixed, but to that pulley, there's another mass which is attached. This mass is five kilograms, and this mass is 10 kilograms. And the question is, what is the acceleration of the five kilograms and the 10 kilograms uh, with respect to the inertial reference frame? So we want to calculate what's the acceleration, A5, what is the acceleration, A10, and also we want to calculate what the tension in the string is. So if you have followed my last, last particular episode, then you would remember that we require three equations to solve these three unknowns, but we can only build two equations from Newton's second law and the third equation comes from constraint motion. So we need to build a constraint equation. Let's first build the two equations which we can easily do it. So let's write down all the forces which we know are going to act on these bodies. We know there is a gravitational force acting this way. I'm gonna call G as a 10. So gravitational force is mg, that's a 100 Newton acting over here. There's a gravitational force acting on this fella and that is 5 into g, that's 50. There's a tension force acting on this guy in this string, let's call the tension as T and that tension is the same here, so there's going to be a tension force here. There's also going to be the same tension force over here. Ooh, notice that this particular pulley is pulled up with tension forces of 2T. Now here's the thing, <clears throat> this pulley is massless, so it cannot accelerate because it would get infinity acceleration. So massless stuff must always be in equilibrium, regardless of whether they're accelerating, whether the rest of the stuff is accelerating or not. Therefore, in order for this pulley to be always in equilibrium, since it is massless, the tension in this string must exactly counter this tension. Or in other words, the tension in this string must be 2T. So there must be a 2T tension downwards this way. Hence, there must be a 2T tension upwards this way. So notice how, because the pulley is massless, this ends up having 2T. I hope you understand it. So we can now build equation for this mass. So for 10 kilogram, we have, I take upwards as positive. I'm gonna call it as, uh, and I'm gonna assume that the acceleration is I want to just assume the acceleration is upwards. A1 and sorry, A10 and this is A5. Remember, I'm free to choose the directions of accelerations. So I'll take upwards positive. So I'm going to say now T minus 100 is 10 times the acceleration of this block. So that's equation number one for me. And then I can build a second equation. I'm going to build that over here for five kilograms. And that's going to be over here, again, I'm going to say 2t minus um, 50, which must be equal to 5 times the acceleration of block number 5. That's equation number 2. And now we need a constraint equation that connects this acceleration with this acceleration. Now your first thoughts may be, since the string length has to be a constant, a10 should be equal to, so I'm just going to write maybe we would say maybe a of 10 must be opposite of a of 5 right well we need to confirm this uh, the only constraint we know which is true is that the length of the string is going to be a constant but we still don't know whether this is true or false so the best way to do that is just check so what i'm going to do is i'm going to consider this level And here's what I'm gonna say. This length will always remain the same, regardless of what whether the pulley goes up or the pulley goes down, it really doesn't matter. This length is always gonna remain the same. So I don't care about this length. I'm only gonna care about this particular length, okay? So let me call this length as some x. Let me call this length as y. Then the length of the string from here to here is going to be x, another x, remember the pulleys are massless and small and stuff, another x 
and y. So the total length would be 2x plus y. And that should remain a constant. That cannot change. Therefore, if I differentiate this, 2x dot plus y dot should be equal to 0. Therefore, velocity of this block, that is block 5, must be equal to negative of velocity of this block divided by 2. That is the constraint equation that we are getting for velocity. The velocities can't be equal. The, so you see, this string over here, since there are two parts of the string, as this guy goes down by say 10 centimeter, this string must only go up by 5 centimeters because there are two strings over here. Makes sense, right? So the whole pulley must go up only by a speed of half of that. Similarly, if I double differentiate this, we get another constraint. We now get the acceleration. We'll get 2x double dot plus y double dot must be equal to 0. x double dot is the acceleration of this guy. So acceleration of phi must be equal to minus acceleration of 10 divided by 2 or acceleration of 10 must be 2 times the acceleration of phi. Same story for the acceleration. So you see, this is not true. Here's a tip. If you ever see the tension gets doubled, acceleration will be always half of wherever the tension is half. <laughs> Let me repeat. If you see that there are, if there's any particular pulley or there's a mass where there is twice the amount of tension compared to some other object, it'll get half the amount of acceleration. Remember this. This has to be true because there's a much more, there's a much better in principle involved, which is the energy conservation. Okay? Remember, uh, if you remember work done, it is force times distance. The energy lost over here should be equal to energy gained over here. If this is going down, this is going up. And that can only happen uh, provided this goes half the distance because you have twice the amount of force. So from that, I always like to remember, I don't, I don't have to do this. You can just use energy conservation and figure out that the acceleration over here should be half the acceleration over there, okay? All right, so now that we have the constraint equation, let's write down the three equations on the fresh page. And let's solve this bad boy. Or, you know what, we'll just solve it over here. We have a, I'm gonna substitute this equation in equation number one, or maybe I'll substitute in equation number two. So here's equation number one again. I have T minus 100 equal to 10 A acceleration of 10. And this guy I'm gonna substitute here. So this is my equation number three. So I will get 2T minus 50 should be equal to acceleration of five is acceleration of 10 divided by two. So I get minus five acceleration of 10 divided by 2. I actually wanted to substitute here but I forgot. I don't know why I keep doing this. Alright, let's rewrite this. We get this as um, 40 minus 100 equals minus 5 times acceleration of 10. So now we want to get rid of, um, let's say, tension. So I'm going to multiply this by 4 and now you guys can solve this. So let's solve it using a different color. Let's use blue. Running out of space over here, let's do this. 40 minus 400 is 40 times A of 10. And you have 40 minus 100 equals minus 5 A of 10. I'm gonna subtract these guys. So this cancels. I have 400 minus 400 plus 100, that's a minus 300. That should be equal to 45 times A naught. So that gives me A of 10 as, um, let's see, 5 goes 9 times and 5 goes 60 times. So I get a minus 60 divided by 9. And I can divide this further as minus um, 30, sorry, 3, 2, 0, 20 divided by 3. That's the acceleration meters per second square. That's the acceleration of 10. 
So notice I'm getting a negative sign which makes a lot of sense because this acceleration is going to be downwards. This acceleration will be upwards. The mass was small and the force is double. So obviously this thing will get accelerated upwards like crazy. So that makes a lot of sense. And the acceleration of five is going to be negative half of that. So it's gonna be 10 by three. And that is a positive number because as we predicted, this will end up going up. So that makes sense. And finally, final, 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 we're gonna solve for tension. I'm gonna use this equation to solve for tension. So this equation. So tension is going to be equal to 10 times A of 10. So it's gonna be minus 200 divided by three plus 100. So that ends up being, you have a 300, that's 100 by three. So that's 33.3 something. So we have the required data. And this is how double pulley systems can be solved.